what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? The family of a black man who was out jogging earlier this year when he was shot in the head dead by a white man who claims he thought he was a burglar is demanding justice. Ahmaud Arby was shot dead in the Satilla Shores neighborhood in Bronxwick, Georgia, just after 1 p.m. on February 23rd. According to Glenn County Police, officers responded to the area as a result of a 911 call. But by the time they arrived to the scene, Aubrey had been shot by a white man identified as 34-year-old Travis McMichael. Travis and his pappy Gregory, 64, a retired Brunswick Judicial Circuit District Attorney investigator, had seen Aubrey, who was unarmed, running in the area and armed themselves before chasing him down in a pickup truck. About 50 seconds into the call, the dispatcher interrupted the caller and said, I just need to know what he was doing wrong. During the chase, the McMichaels yelled for Aubrey to stop because they wanted to talk to him, according to the New York Times. They then pulled up to Aubrey and Travis got out of the truck with the shotgun. According to Greg, Aubrey violently attacked Travis. The two men began to struggle and Travis Shot once, a few seconds later, he shot again, and Aubrey was dead, just like that. Two months later, family, these two uncivilized beings have yet to be charged, have yet to feel the cold metal cuffs around their wrists. Off the rip. Let's switch races. Let's play a game called Switch the Race. What do you think would happen if a white man was jogging in any neighborhood in America? It could be the hood. White man jogging. Two black men see him and think that he's a burglar. They get after him in their pickup. They jump out with the guns. Struggle ensues. They pump two rounds in him. White boy dead. What do you think would happen to the black guys? Ding, ding, ding. You don't have to think. You already know what would happen. This was not a case of mistaken identity. Even if it was, they had no right to take the law into their own hands. After all, we are a nation of laws. Where have you heard that at? They had no right to kill that man. This reminds me of George Zimmerman going after Trayvon Martin. Remember, Trayvon just walking. Minding his own business. Hey, hey, come here. What you doing? He gets on the phone, call 911 to set it up. Hey, uh, I'm following this guy. You know, he's, uh, you know, he, he looks suspicious. Uh, he ain't supposed to be around here. You know, there's been some burglaries in the neighborhood. Setting it up. Well, sir, we don't need you to do that. We don't need you to follow him. He said, I'm following. We don't need you to do that, sir. A few moments later, he accosts Trayvon. They get into a physical struggle because, after all, nobody has the right to just approach you and start questioning you and putting their hands on you. So you struggle. He starts losing the struggle. He pulls out a gun and pump one in Trayvon's chest. So these are two clowns saw this dude running in the neighborhood he out of pocket. We don't like what he looked like. Hmm. 
Ain't no telling. They could have been drinking beers or whatever. I don't know. They may have been high on something, whatever. But my opinion is they felt like they wanted a free kill. They went after that man. They hunted him. They didn't follow him. They hunted him and gunned him down in broad daylight. And they're still walking the streets. The reason why I'm so late on covering this, because I really don't like covering these type of damn stories, because I'm about that action. And I just feel like if the police is not going to protect the people, the people got to protect themselves. If they're not going to give you justice, well, you got to get justice. Isn't what they did? They felt, isn't that what they did? They felt like they wasn't getting any justice. So they took the law into their own hands. This is reminiscent of all those days of hangings when they felt like a black person had committed a transgression or when they just felt like killing somebody black and made up a shitty story. We're going to kill him. And if something come down on us, we'll just say, well, you know, this is why we did it because he did something wrong. And then that's enough to plant it in people's heads that, well, maybe they was, you know, they really felt that way and maybe he deserved it. How to make a racist. Automatically. Blame the victim. Blame the victim and look for an excuse for said racist. And I heard that that neighborhood they live in, there's Confederate flags hanging everywhere. Y'all know what this is, fam. This ain't hard. I'm just looking forward to the days that the people that know what to do start doing it. This is an easy one, man. This was a thrill kill, in my opinion. I think this was a thrill kill. Nothing more than a thrill kill. Like I said, even if they did suspect dude of burglarizing something, they had no right to chase him down and, and kill him, execute him. They didn't have a right to do that. But, you know, they probably been doing a lot of stuff. And, you know, we're talking, you know, you know, this dude was a DA investigator, so he's totally probably connected with the whole city and everything, you know, the whole little old town and know everybody. And the good old boys are doing what they do. Look out for each other. This sounds like a federal civil rights case to me. In any event, the mama should be embarrassed and the daddy should have pulled out. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?